Hello everyone, uh, my name is Kathan and today we'll be discussing the problem weird algorithm from the introductory problems of the CACS problem set. Let's begin. Let me read out the problem for you. So consider an algorithm that takes as input a positive integer n and if n is even, uh, the algorithm divides it by 2. If n is odd, the algorithm multiplies it by 3 and adds 1 to it. The algorithm repeats this until n is 1. They've also given an example uh, sequence for n equals to 3. So 3 is odd, right? So multiply it by 3 and add 1 to it. So 3 into 3 plus 1, 10. And uh, 10 becomes even, so divide by 2. 5, 5 is odd, so multiply it by 3 and add 1 to it. So it becomes 16. 16 is even, so divide by 2. 8 is even, divide by 2. 4 is even, divide by 2. 2 is also even, you reach 1. When you reach 1, you stop. A task is to simulate the execution of algorithm for a given value of n. To be more precise, uh, you will be given an integer n, which is actually positive, as specified in the constraints. And we have to print a line that contains all the values of n during the algorithm. Now, the same example they have given that they explained it here. Now, one simple question that should come to your mind is, uh, are you sure to reach 1 always? Now, the answer to this question is in the question itself. <laughs> now, if we are not sure to reach one always, uh, they will not ask you to print all the values of n during the algorithm, right? They will not ask you to print infinite output, right? Uh, so you will reach one, that's the point. And it will be in within the time constraints uh, because otherwise, uh, why would they ask you to simulate the algorithm? If you want a bit more on this, like you can maybe try proving that from n you'll always reach one, but you will fail. Uh, it is because uh, like, this is actually a open-ended problem in mathematics. So I remember this, like, I don't know if you know this, uh, there's this channel number file on YouTube. Uh, they have very great videos on mathematical problems. So this is a famous problem, uh, which is called collage conjecture. So if you don't know this, uh, like I'll just show you a small snippet from chat GPT. So what this conjecture says is no matter what positive integer you start with, you'll always eventually reach one if you follow that algorithm, right? Now people have tried proving it, but uh, they have failed. But all they know is uh, for n less than equal to 2 past 68, uh, this works, right? So we will indeed reach one. So they have proved it. Like that isn't like we get just uh, empirical evidence, right? That just by running the program, they have proved that it works for two, n less than equals to 2 past 68. Now this number 2 past 68 is actually very big than 10 past 6. So I'll come to this conversion between two powers and 10 power. This is also a very interesting thing you should know as a beginner, but there is no proof for it, but it works. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, anyway, uh, so let's just uh, go to the uh, drawing board and try to understand this problem a little bit more. And it's a very simple question, right? All right. So I have two things to discuss here. Uh, I'll do a dry run on one example uh, for example value of n. And then I'll show you like this two pass 68 is actually uh, greater than equals to 1 e6, right? And in that process, I'll teach you how to convert between powers of 2 and powers of 10, which is actually very helpful in your competitive programming journey. Like you'll use a lot uh, when dealing with binary search related time complexities like this login complexity and all. Anyway, uh, let's just do a dry run on one example right now. I just take an example of n equals to 5. So 5 is odd, right? So if 5 is odd, uh, then you multiply it by 3 and add 1 to it. So it becomes 16. 16 is even, so you divide it by 2, it becomes 8. 8 is even, so you divide it by 2 again, uh, it becomes 4. 4 is even, divide by 2, uh, 2. Then 2 is also even, divide by 2 and 1. So that's that, you have to stop there. And what you have to effectively print is, uh, you have to print this 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Right, so simple stuff. Now. Uh, what you can do is, uh, I can show you this through pseudocode in a bit, but uh, let's first prove that uh, this 2 power 68 is actually greater than equals to 10 power 6, right? So if you want to like in general, when you want to move from numbers uh, like this 2 power k to some 10 power k dash or something or vice versa, you have to remember a very important relationship, uh, which is that uh, uh, 2 power 10 is nearly equal to 10 power 3. So this number is actually 1024 and 10 power 3 is 1000. So knowing this relationship actually simplifies a lot of your calculations, uh, especially in binary search related questions, right? So if you have a number, let's say here 2 power 68, and you want to find out what is the corresponding power of 10, uh, 
what you can do like you know that 2 power 3 is near like 2 power 10 is nearly equal to 10 power 3 so you can just divide it by 10 and multiply it by 3 if you consider the 68 to be nearly equal to 70 it becomes 7 so it is somewhat equal to 10 power 21 right and this 10 power 21 is of course bigger than 10 power 6 so yeah fine so you know that the conjecture works for uh, numbers less than equals to 10 power 21 and uh, your number 10 power 6 is anyway uh, less than that so it's gonna work right so what is the pseudo code then um, the pseudo code uh, is actually pretty simple uh, what you have to do is uh, until you reach 1 until you reach 1 what you have to do is you have to print 10 right print 10 so uh, for example you can first print 5 and then you update 10 based on its parity so what you can do is you can update n based on parity so parity meaning uh, whether uh, it is even or odd so if it is odd you uh, multiply it by 3 and add 1 to it if it is even you just divide by 2 and uh, what you have to do is effectively of course uh, when you have broken out of the loop you know that n is 1 so you have to print 1 as well or n whatever uh, just uh, like to complete the simulation right so i mean uh, that's that about the pseudo code uh, uh, maybe what you can do is you can try implementing it uh, and paste in the comments right now uh, otherwise i'll show you the code okay all right so here's my solution uh, first thing you will see is i'm taking n as input but the data type is unsigned long long like why not integer like n was uh, greater than equals to 1 and less than 10 power 6 so it fills very well within the range of integer so if you don't know the range of integer it is approximately minus 10 power 9 to plus 10 power 9 why not that uh, it is simply because throughout the algorithm uh, we will be increasing the value of n by multiplication right so there might be an overflow so I can uh, use long long here as well because long long will provide a higher range like minus 10 power 18 to 10 power 18 but you can argue uh, since these operations uh, don't make the value of n negative why do we care about the negative range like minus 1 to 10 power 18 just take the unsigned counterpart and uh, what it will do is now this n uh, can be any anywhere from 0 till 2 power like 10 power 36 a higher positive range that's why uh, n is taken as unsigned long long the next thing also you will interestingly notice is uh, instead of while loop i used a for loop right this for loop uh, is bounded by 1e6 so this loop doesn't run more than 1e6 number of times so why did i do this now this is a very common practice in comparative programming when we want to bound our number of operation this is a uh, especially used heavily when binary search on answer related questions so we do this because i want to be completely sure that i don't run into infinite loop because for that condition for example while n not equals to 1 you might write something inside and uh, who knows maybe n doesn't reach 1 or anything uh, so in that case there is a chance that you will run an infinite loop and your program will crash <laughs> so just to be safe uh, uh, in this case what you are doing is I am ensuring the number of operations will never exceed 1e6 right so and if you don't know uh, like in one second uh, you can any which way not run more than 10 power 7 seconds like 10 power 7 operation so any which if you are having more than uh, some 1e7 number of uh, operations you will have a TLE which you don't want uh, so this is even tighter bound uh, ensuring that we don't go more than 1e6 number of operations right so next thing is pretty simple you print n and uh, if n is 1 so the last value of the simulation break otherwise uh, update n based on parity even divide by 2 uh, odd multiply by 3 and add 1 to it right so let me just run it so the input i will take the same input at the code of like CSES. so let me just run it so yeah it works so if you want i can take one more example n equals to 10 and it works as well right so 10 is even so 10 becomes 5 and then this sequence i guess you have seen a lot of times in this video and uh, yeah so one thing that remains is to discuss the time and space complexity so time complexity like this is just constant time operation right and uh, this loop won't run more than 1e6 number of time so your time complexity is no more than 1e6 right we cannot uh, find exact number of operations because there is no proof for it but it won't be more than 1e6 which is fine you can uh, run 1e6 number of operations in one second 
fine and uh, what was space complexity you are not using any external space rather than just variable so again uh, it will be constant time so time complexity one is six and uh, space complexity will be uh, order of one now one exercise for you uh, before i end it so this is a c plus plus solution right uh, what you can do is you can maybe paste solutions in Java and Python because I guess those two will be the primary programming languages after this one in comparative programming. And yeah, I mean, uh, that's that about this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>